what service do you offer here at Mark Powell? Well, basically, we've got um, a bespoke tailoring business which I've had for the last sort of 30 years, which I've built up, you know, through regular clothes of various celebrities and high profile people. And um, but recently, because of the way things have been going with the business, we've decided to push more of the ready to wear and the made to measure side of the business. Okay. I mean, I do a lot of high profile celebs anyway. And basically, the aspirational market is where the real money is. Yeah. My suits, you know, they start from around three thousand five hundred pounds. So, for the average guy, that's a lot of money, with all due respect. And that makes it difficult, really, for um, people to be able to afford that. But equally, they can afford thousand pound on a ready to wear suit. It's a yeah, lot more realistic. Yeah, whereas you're offering something that's fitted <coughs> specifically to them. Exactly, you're offering yeah. something that's totally. Specific to them, but the great thing is with a lot of the ready-to-wear things that I do, they are still very individual in the style that they are and stuff. So they do work for people, you know, that want something a little bit different and individual, even though they are sort of ready-to-wear. So how do you differ from Savile Row? Would you say? Well, basically, my thing's a lot more edgy. Um, I mean, I am in the book of Savile Row. Actually, I've got eight or nine pages in the book on the history okay. of Savile Row, even though half of a lot of the new people that are on Savile Row are not even featured in the book. Because basically what's happened with Savile Row, it's living a lot more on its legacy and its history rather than what it really is what now. What it's doing now, yeah. Yeah, that's the problem. I mean, don't get me wrong, it's still a marvellous street and there are still some wonderful tailors on Savile Row. But it is still, um, you know, you've got, you know, obviously the big thing that happened in recent years was Abercrombie Fitch opening around the corner and they're now about to open a kid's store on the street. You've got a McQueen that's open there doing men's, which is fine, but it's more menswear lifestyle than real tailoring really, you know. Um, so you established yourself in 1985. Has your role changed within the company since then? Well, the thing is I'm a control freak. I'm very hands-on. <laughs> and um, basically, I'm still very involved with the business. I mean, you know, obviously I've got a few people, I've got a team of people that make and work, make the clothes for me. But basically, the whole business is um, still very controlled by me with regard to the market and the advertising. And also, what's happening over the next sort of year or so is that I am actually developing a lot more of the online presence. But I'm actually going to get people in to do that sort of thing for me. Okay, but you, so do you personally meet the? I still the meet clients, the clients. Yeah. I still measure the clients. I still design all the clothes, obviously. Yeah. Uh, but I don't make any of the work stuff. I delegate or everything, really. You know, I've got two okay. people that sort of make it stuff for me. Um, what was it about fashion, in particular tailoring, that drew you to this career choice? Did you train to do it, or was it something you just sort of came into by chance? No, it's a good question. Actually, I was always into clothing and style from a very young age. Um, I mean, I was going to tailors from the age of 12 or 13 and design and okay. stuff. So when I left school, the first thing I did find out I was a hairdresser. I wish but even that was because I wanted to be involved in fashion. But I didn't even know at that point how I could get directly involved with fashion. Didn't go to college, didn't study fashion at college or anything. And then basically built up um, my business by just learning about the skills of tailoring. And I worked in a couple of very upmarket men's... Um, ready to wear shops which were basically in and around Savile Row and the first place I worked was on Conduit Street and the tailors was basically a tailors called Anthony Sinclair well he did all the original James Bond stuff so oh, he's a pretty he? good tailor so you've got a lot of good experience before you set up on your yeah, own yeah oh yeah you have to yeah. I mean basically it was a personal passion sort of like going to tailors and designing clothing but you still had to learn about the fundamentals of tailoring you've got to remember really what I'd started to do when I was sort of uh, 17, 18 was really the first, it was very, very pioneering because the idea of basically just setting up a tailoring business but trying to do it with a slightly more of a fashion edge to it, there was no one really doing that at that time. Now there's, you know, everyone now wants to be a, a trendy fa a yeah. tailor <laughs> yeah. through the means of fashion. In fact, only a couple of years ago I was um, judge on a thing called the... the um, Young Taylor of the Year. Yeah, I was going to ask yeah. you about that, yeah. And uh, basically with that, you know, it was all like, you know, it was all the, if you go down somewhere and that's quite funny, all the trainee kids, they've got beards and they all look sort of really cool and vintage and, you know, it's that whole cliche thing that um, yeah. everyone now that's trendy and cool wants to be a tailor, you know. 
do you um, base quite a lot of your stuff on your own personal style? Well, you're very stylish in all the yeah. things I've seen you. I mean, really, a lot of my style is very inspired by nostalgia. But what I do, and I think this is really important, you have to update it. You have yeah. to update it to make it look modern and contemporary. But equally, you know, I take a lot of influences from you know, the 40s, the 50s and 60s. But I think it's really, really important to not make it too pure to authentic, authentic to style of the era, because otherwise it just looks like costume. Where a lot of people get it wrong with that. It does look like, co you know, it doesn't look, yeah. looks you like they've gone in a fancy dress age. shop. Yeah. And it's bonkers, you don't yeah, like that, which is, yeah. <laughs> but it's not cool, I don't yeah. think. And I think, you know, it's all fine taking influences from nostalgia, but I do think you have to update it, you know. Um, so I was going to ask you about BBC Three Young Tailor of the Week because mm, yeah, mm. you were a judge on that. Yeah. Um, how important is it to keep this tailor trade going? Well, actually, that's the trouble. I mean, sadly, it is a dying crop. Yeah, which is really sad. It is sad, but what the plan is for me over you know the next few years is I've had to accept I've got to modernise the business. I can't just be doing bespoke tailoring now. I've got to look at developing the ready-to-wear side of the business more and building up more of a lifestyle thing around it. Which I have done to a point, but now I'm really planning to take it a lot further. Uh, we're going to double the sort of, uh, level of ready-to-wear stock that we carry. Okay. And the great thing with me is I actually have got quite a distinctive style, which I certainly can sort of build on and evolve you know, a lot more in the next couple of years, and that's the plan. And is, um, you said earlier about um, you want to go a bit more online. Do you think that's yeah. really important? These you days? have to. Yeah. You have to. I mean, at the end of the day, you can be like an arrogant old porn guy. <laughs> oh, I'm not doing that. But the point yeah. is, yeah, if you're funny enough, you look at even the Huntsman's, a lot of the great old traditional talent and stuff, well, they're all just starting to uh, launch ready to wear lines now. Huntsman have just last week launched a ready to wear um, range, which I think they're going to try and sell online. I mean, the thing is, if you just keep to a couple of... I think you have to limit your styles that you sell online. Yeah. Because tailoring's a very tactile business. People like to see the fabric, like to see the cut physically. And don't it's good they? for you to meet them as well. Yeah, well, it, it is a very personal, hands-on business. But there is certainly... I mean, we do get people, you know, from Scotland and stuff that certainly would buy shirts. that I Because I've got my own style of shirts that are quite distinctive to me. You could certainly sell a lot of shirts and ties online. And I think... If the clothing that we do becomes more like outerwear tailoring pieces rather than suits, so like distinctive jackets that can be worn on their own. I mean, for example, I'm going to run over here now, and your camera's That's going okay. to no, lose I'll follow, me. I'll follow you. You can follow me, but for example, you could certainly sell things like this online, I believe. Yeah, because it's quite yeah. simple, isn't exactly. it? Exactly, yeah. distinctive. But it's individual. Some people would want to buy it, or even something like this. You know, you can certainly look, but I think rather than doing it as suits, you know, as separates like jackets or, I mean, even these are quite unique. Oh, they're oh, amazing yeah, colour. Yeah. So things like that, I think you can see, I'm definitely coats as well. And um, the thing is, once someone's brought something online, it might draw them next time they're in London to come to the shop as well. Well, exactly. And also, the price points of a lot of the ready-to-wear are quite sensible. They're not like as if they're going to be... Having to you know, spend thousands. I mean, a suit ready to wear suits eight hundred, and a three piece suits nine fifty, uh, which you know is a realistic. I mean, really, most designer ready to wear suits yeah. are around that price point. Yeah, so if not more expensive. If not more, <laughs> if not more exactly. Um, um, and this is a bespoke suit, funny enough. Yeah, I mean, there is a difference with a handmade suit. There is definitely, you know, you can. Yeah, you can this. feel. I mean, this is funny enough. This is Bradley Wiggins's actually. Is it? Yeah. So he's one of your... That's yeah, what I was going to yeah, ask you friend. about. Yeah, well, that's the legendary one there that I did, the sports personality, wasn't it? Oh, shit, the blue velvet one. But I mean, I do a lot of other celebrities. And over the years, I've done sort of Bowery, Jagger, Naomi Campbell, Kira Knightley, all those sorts Yeah, of I was going to ask you about that, because I know you've created some for some huge stars. Do you do you offer the service to them, or did they find you? How did well, it all start? Normally, it's through stylists actually, and normally the stylists are the people that find you. But funny enough, the best relationships I've normally had with celebrities have been direct personal contact, where they've sort of found me, and then we've just sort of worked together, like Martin Freeman being an example of that. He was somebody that just came in initially as a client, and then you know over the years he's become a very very good client. Um, but the thing is, it's like with a lot of this stuff, I mean, 
What's great about all these people and clients that come to me, they come to me because they want to come to me, not to, um, you know, a lot of people, they throw clothing at people. So they wear the clothing, well, like yeah. Prada and Gucci and all these big brands, Tom. They Ford. want all the stuff to swim, so they just yeah. send it to them yeah. hoping exactly. for the best, exactly. don't they? And I, like, you know, I would never do that. I you want them to come for you because they yeah, like what that's you right. do. And it's a lot more, I think you can really see that as well. I mean, when you look at a lot of these um, big stars on the red carpet and they just sort of hide or borrow the suit, yeah. <laughs> they don't fit them very well a lot of the time, do they? Yeah, a bit gapy here. Yeah, yeah. and they're long, too long on the sleeve or, you know. Whereas you're ensuring that it's yeah. exactly what they need. Yeah, it's represented how it should be represented, you know. This is a bit of a personal question, but have you got a favourite celebrity client that you have dressed? Well, there's, there's <laughs> a big favoritism. one. I mean, there's lots of celebrities that I've dressed over the years, but um, no, I never get tired of all the clients that I've made clothes for. Um, I mean, Martin is a personal favourite. I do, and I, I remember, you know, I always enjoyed making clothes for Naomi Campbell. She was great to make stuff for. I bet that was really interesting to meet her. Yeah, she's a really nice girl, as much as the media try to give her a hard time. Yeah, they do, don't they? Oh, you're very sweet. You have created suits for many famous musicians, such as Mick Jagger, Paul Weller. Do you think fashion and music work hand in hand together? Well, I think it always has, really, hasn't it? And particularly with the sort of tailoring that I do, because really, in a way, me being located in and around Carnival is actually quite appropriate, because really this was where the whole post-war sort of fashion style revolution happened, but it was also happening hand in hand with pop culture in the 60s, wasn't it? Yeah, of course. So like the Beatles and the Stones and Swing in London and Carnaby yeah. Street, it was all I just did my together. dissertation on um, yeah. David Bailey, so I've been doing all that. Well, that's right. Yeah. So, you know, it's, and of course John Stephen was the pioneer of, in Carnaby Street, and of course he dressed a lot of the big celebrities in that era. But, so my thing is actually almost quite similar to that in a lot of ways, where you know, I have actually, obviously, I do think, yeah, popular culture and pop stars do go very much hand in hand, hand, with, in hand. with fashion. Um, what do you think great style is, especially great for style, men? It's got to be individual, really, hasn't it? And a lot of me, people don't understand the subtleties of style. Yeah, some people um, like, I think they've got to go over the top. They don't try they? too hard. I mean, a lot of celebrities at the moment, they're all wearing that very over tailored look, without mentioning names of the tailors. Uh, I don't partic I'm not particularly fond of um, how a lot of the um, tape, you know, the young, the young guys that are um, who are going to Fashion Week and stuff, and they've got like all this. Well, but they're stuff. Try, it's too try hard. Yeah. And I always mean they have a vintage hat on, <laughs> and but you know, yeah, but that's I, I've look, always done it. it. I've yeah. always done it. It's not like I've just jumped on the thing and they're only doing it at the moment because it's fashionable. Yeah. And that's why it's different, and I think you can see that a lot of the time. Sure, it looks quite cool on some of those guys because they are young guys, young, good-looking guys. Yeah. But, you know, if you look up there, there's a picture of me there, 1985. Look, I'm wearing it. I'm, I'm obviously the more good-looking boy. <laughs> That's me. But you've um, obviously always had that yeah, sort of so, style. Yeah, so, you know, if you look on here, there's lots of interesting history up here, actually. So is this all images to do with your... Yeah, you know, press and people I've made clothes for, I mean, included, you know... Spice Girls and Brian really? Ferry. <laughs> Gangster Number One, which is a great film that I did a lot of clothes four years ago. Yeah, you've worked in films. Yeah, Naomi well. Campbell there, George Clooney. I mean, I can do, you know, I've got a good knowledge of period clothing as well, obviously. As Sarah's and Paul Doak dressed as uh, Abraham Lincoln, George Clooney there as Thomas Jefferson. And, uh, you know, there's Harry Potter down there. Yeah, Daniel Radcliffe, he's Daniel another one Radcliffe, of yours. Yeah. Um, that's quite a good picture. That's in a really good men's fashion ink magazine called The Rake. The That's Rake. my son there, actually. That's me and my son. Oh, is it? Does he have a similar style to you? He's very stylish, my son, actually. But he's, you know, he didn't really want to get into fashion. I think he's more... I think he's going to go more into the sort of club bar area. He's sort okay. of working as a DJ at the moment in a bar, so I think that's probably more the direction he's going to go. Although when he first left school, he did work in Chester Barry on Savile Row and then he worked for Ralph Lauren for a little while but it wasn't really in his blood. Okay. He likes dressing up but it's not. But not something he wants to do as a no. career. And but my daughter as well, she's she um, did a degree in performing arts and you know she she does work as a sort of as a singer, part time singer, sometimes in clubs and bars. And she's just taking a course, might be doing a course in um, costume, theatrical costume. Okay, Which, so she's sort of yeah, taking so on she's the... sort of going that way a little bit. And what do you think the key to your success was? 
Um, well, I've just done it on my own terms. I've never, never really, never compromised. Always done it You've done what how you I want to do, do it. But equally, I've never sold out. And a lot of people really do sell out these days to try and get on, or you know, have to get big backers and investors. Stuff that I've always tried to be independent. Although it is getting a lot harder to be an independent because of obviously the fact that rents are getting a lot higher. Yeah. Because a lot of the landlords in these areas are corporate now, so that inflates the rents. Yeah, it makes it harder for you in terms. Yeah. But it seems like you've always stayed true to your style and you've yeah. tried to please other people, you've tried to no. please what you, who you know exactly. your client Exactly, I've just done it on my own terms, but yeah. I think it's a really good time for actually my style at the moment, or my taste, it is actually coming into a sort of phase of really being really yeah. my thing at this moment, you know, especially, especially with, with Lon London Men's Fashion Week. People, I think men are becoming more of aware. I mean, I know you do women's clothing. Yeah, but it is mainly ultimately about the men's men, style, yeah. of course it is. Which is nice, because a lot of stores, they concentrate on women, and it's nice to, ha to meet someone who's quite solid on their menswear. Well, that's right. I mean, you also, the trouble with a lot of men's brand shops, it, the products all look quite similar, don't yeah, they? Yeah, you go into I mean, if you took the name same. away from a lot of these people, you, it could be anybody. Yeah, it? <laughs> exactly. It's all much of the same. They'll all have the same type of knitwear, they'll all have the same sort of pea coat, they'll all have the same sort of chino. You know what I mean? It's all, yeah. you know, I'm talking about if you go to the likes of shops like Ben Sherman and these sort yeah, of shops. Yeah, of course. Their brand, branding and their products are all quite generic and quite similar, aren't they? Yeah, yeah. and it, people want something a bit different sometimes, yeah. and that's what you're offering. Well, that's what I'm great. offering, exactly. Yeah. It's that a bit more individual, you know. Um, for our final question, um, have you got any words of wisdom for our subscribers who are looking to follow a similar career within tailoring? Well, I think tailoring's a great thing, but you have to believe in your own talent. You have to believe in your own style and interests, and you have to do a lot of research to understand what you're doing as well. A lot of people, they don't really, uh, I think you have to develop your own style and your own taste and feel, feel confident and, sell that. and make it yours and yeah. try and make, like I've done with my yeah, style, cool. make your style your thing, yeah. Thank you very much for letting me Pleasure, in. Pleasure my darling, a little bit ugly, I'm on best form today. That's all right. <laughs>